All right. Hello, everybody. Dr. Shadia Rafich here, board certified surgeon, owner of Vet Triage, 24-7 telemedicine for uh, pets all around the world, anytime, any day, any night, and uh, any species. So this video is going to focus on seizures. It's a very common question that we get on Vet Triage. It's a very common animal emergency, and it's, of course, very um, traumatic and dramatic for pet owners because, well, there are seizures. So it's, uh, it's terrifying to look at, especially if you've never seen, seen one before in a pet. And so we're gonna go over some, some basics regarding seizures. I wanna point out this amazing textbook by the uh, one and only amazing Dr. Della Hunta, who personally taught me um, the majority of what I know about veterinary neurology. So just wanted to uh, throw him a quick plug there. It's a fantastic book. And he is basically the, the father of veterinary neurology, as far as I can tell. So um, a lot of what I know is from Dr. D, but it's also from some of his, his uh, uh, veterinarians that he's helped teach and, and um, some mentors of mine as well. So, so seizures. Um, by definition, if, you're, if your pet is having a seizure, it's something that's affecting the, part, the brain obviously, and it's more specifically the prosencephalon, which is, which is the, uh, the embryological term for what's known as the cerebrum, which is the major part of the brain that we all think of, the, front of the, the, uh, the, the biggest part of the brain. And so there's something that's triggering a chemical imbalance that then creates basically a, a, a hectic neuronal firing, firing of the nerves to then overload the system and create a seizure. So we're gonna go right away into the three categories of what causes seizures, broadly speaking, in animals. The first is there's something systemically wrong, something internal that's wrong. So for example, if you have a pet that's ingested a toxin of some kind, you have a pet that has kidney failure or liver failure, um, something like that internal that's creating chemicals, hormonal imbalances, metabolic imbalances, in, and that, that of course will affect the brain and then create seizures. That's the internal stuff. That's the first category. The second category of seizures is there's something actually physically in the brain causing a problem. Brain tumors, immune-mediated disease, encephalitis or meningitis, infl inflammation basically of the brain, strokes will do it, con con contusions from trauma will do it. Those, that, those are reasons for having seizures that, are, that relate to something physically being in the brain. And that's what, we, that's what most of us will think about, especially when you have an older pet, and we'll go into more details. The third category, if you figure out the other two categories do not apply to your pet through veterinary testing, we'll talk about that. Third category is epilepsy, which is a chemical imbalance in the brain. So uh, there's, there's obviously a complex interaction between the nerves of the brain and what chemicals influence them. And if there's an imbalance of that, there'll be an overt firing of the nerves, um, electrical signal, signal firing, and then you'll end up having a seizure. So those are the three categories, something internal, something physically in the brain, and then finally epilepsy, a chemical imbalance. If you rule out the first two things, if you do the, the various veterinary tests and you figure out it's not something internal and it's not something in the actual brain, then the only course of action it can be is the third, which is epilepsy. It's um, very, very difficult slash impossible to actually diagnose epilepsy. So it's a diagnosis of exclusion. It is what you label your pet as having if the first two categories are felt to be not the case for your for your pet. So how do you figure out between those three categories? How do you go about it? Well, most people will first figure out the first category, something internal, because that's probably the easiest thing to figure out. It involves typically some blood tests, maybe some x-rays, sonograms, urine testing, whatever your veterinarian thinks or veterinary neurologist thinks is most appropriate. They're going to do the, those variety of tests to figure that out. The reason why the majority of us figured that out first is because those tests are usually um, cost-effective. They're cheaper than the other tests we're gonna talk about soon, but also they are, they are the most convenient, they're the most widely available. Every veterinary clinic can at least run blood work, x-rays, urine testing, some can do sonogram, and you figuring out the internal stuff helps you figure out whether or not there's an emergency situation with your pet with something internal, and also figures, it also helps you figure out that it's not probably not those other two categories. So you do the blood test, the urine test, the x-rays, the sonogram to figure out there's something internally wrong with your pet. If there is, then your veterinarian will focus treatment on what is internally going on with your pet, and then hopefully will stop the seizures. If, however, you find out that first category, everything is negative, 
blood work, x-rays, urine testing, sonogram. There's nothing inherently wrong with your pet internally. And we know your pet didn't get into, get into any chemicals or medications or toxins that they're not supposed to get into. Then you say, okay, well, it's nothing internal. So now we have to look inside the actual brain. That's where things get a little more tricky because tests to look in the brain are not as available. They're also more expensive. The gold standard for that is gonna be two tests. MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. MRI is what we're gonna to do to look for, what we're gonna to perform to look into the brain. It has the highest detail and it's what neurologists are going to use, hands down. The second test is gonna be spinal fluid test. Cerebrospinal fluid or CSF, spinal fluid that surrounds the brain, surrounds the spinal cord, helps for many reasons, but, all, but mainly for nutrients, um, uh, uh, having nutrients being sent to the cells of the brain and spinal cord and eliminating any toxins or, or metabolites from the cells. The CSF can be actually tested for, that's a spinal tap. And so it's similar to an epidural in some respects, but instead of putting injecting, some, injecting something into the CSF, like you would with an epidural, you're actually removing the CSF and having it tested. And for that, you're looking for any abnormal cells. Are there abnormal white blood cells, any infectious cells, what's the glucose, what's the protein? We'll use those factors to try and determine whether or not there's something wrong with the actual brain itself, chemically speaking. Um, and so between MRI and CSF tap or spinal tap, we'll give you an idea of what's going on in the actual brain. So if that comes back negative, if the MRI looks normal and the CSF is normal, then either there's either your pet has epilepsy, which is the third category, right? Diagnosis of exclusion, or there's something there's something that was in the brain that the tests aren't seeing. So for example, strokes in the brain can come and disappear fairly quickly, and our tests can't identify them because it happens so fast. So neurologists will know this, of course, and just keep that in mind as a pet owner, that if those tests come back normal, it doesn't necessarily mean there's nothing wrong with your pet's brain. It means that at that moment, we're not catching it. Um, and so we're gonna speak simply, of course. So if category number two, meaning something's in the brain is shown to be negative, then your only other option is a third category, which is epilepsy. Chemical imbalance in the, in the brain, the MRI won't diagnose that, the CSF tap won't diagnose that, none of the internal stuff will diagnose it, and so from there, you say, okay, well then my pet most likely has epilepsy, in which case, let's treat it. Now, not everybody can afford or have access to these tests, especially the second category, the MRI and CSF um, collection. So what do you do in those scenarios? Well, in that case, that's where the experience of the veterinarian or veterinary neurologist comes into play. So for example, epilepsy in general are most likely to be the case in younger pets, younger being a year, two years, three years old. The older pet is unlikely or less likely to have epilepsy. They can have epilepsy, we call that late onset epilepsy, but if we're speaking in general terms as to what's most likely, the epilepsy category of pets tend to be younger ones. The older pets tend to have either one of the first two problems, internal or something in the brain. And we see by far things more commonly with older pets in the brain rather than internal problems. In general, in general, if you have a pet that's only sh showing seizures. So if you have a pet that's only so showing signs of seizures and nothing else is wrong with them and they're an older pet, then, and you can't do the testing, chances are higher that there's something actually in the brain causing that problem, if we had to guess. The chemical, the, the internal problems, category one um, of what causes seizures, that's a bit tricky. However, most pets that are gonna have internal issues have more signs than just seizures. They're vomiting, they're not eating, they have diarrhea, they're lethargic, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're trying to figure out with minimal to no testing, if your pet has, has the first category, something internally wrong with them, well, usually they also show other signs of illness. And so that may clue the veterinarian that there's something more to the story than um, that's involving the internal stuff rather than something in the brain or epilepsy. So to recap, seizures by definition are caused by chemical imbalances or something affecting the actual brain, the prosencephalon, the cerebrum. There's three broad categories for what causes seizures, something internal, something in the brain, and a chemical imbalance called epilepsy. To decipher, to decipher between those three, the first category, blood work, x-ray, sonogram, urine test, testing, etc. The second category, look in the brain, MRI, CSF collection. Third category is based on ruling out the first two categories, and that's epilepsy. 
then your, your veterinarian will, will tailor treatment towards one of those three categories. That's a video for another time. Um, we'll go into that um, in another video, but that hopefully will help distinguish pet owners and veterinarians who need more guidance with this on how to think about seizures when they happen. Of course, we have not gone into different types of seizures, partial versus versus all, all grand mal seizures. Those are again, other topics that I will leave to your veterinarian also for future videos. But for right now, I wanted to make it clear what causes seizures in general, what the three categories are. And if you don't have the money or accessibility for any testing, how to maybe decipher based on, based on your pet situation, which of those three categories you may be dealing with. Younger animals, otherwise healthy, more likely to have epilepsy, pets that have seizures as their only only sign and who are who are older probably have something in the brain those who have who have seizures as their sign but also other signs of illness vomiting diarrhea not eating weight loss etc may have more internal stuff going on again those are three very broad very broad generalizations that we are going to guess that pet what that pet may have based on on having no testing involved so i hope that helps clarify uh what what seizures are what the three categories are and how to kind of decipher based on, on minimal to no testing obviously always follow the recommendations of your veterinarian or veterinary specialist um, as as these guidelines are purely that just guidelines but hopefully it'll help help you in your in your um, uh, chase for what may be causing seizures in your pet thank you so much this is dr shadia rafage enjoy the video please share it subscribe hit like all the things and i'll see you in the next one take care